in order to qualify to be doctors. And yet you're going to tell us that you weren't well enough prepared? Like, it was obvious that you didn't actually Hold on, have hold it. on, hold on. The man, the myth. The myth. The legend. The legend. The Bruce Wayne. Welcome. Hi, Bruce Wayne. What you guys talking Bruce, about? Bruce. Oh, uh, we're just saying nothing but good things about you, buddy. Don't you worry. <laughs> <laughs> I let me tell you, you know, to to talk over someone who denies Christ, Bruce, denies Bruce, God's Bruce, ability. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Okay. Let me welcome you. First of all, I want to thank you for coming on a program that, well, let's just say, what would you call me? Uh, something of the beast. Anyway, welcome, my friend. Go on. And I hear we may be partners in the future for free will. Oh, amen, brother. All right. Go on, Bruce. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I had to announce you. Go on. No, I'll, um, you, you know, I, I was just caught off guard. I did kind of have a direction, but it, it threw me off just coming in an hour late. I mean, I, I was, I was a little stumped by that, but, um, no, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Uh, brother Charles um, you know God obviously gives us a free will I think you were referencing some verses from the Old Testament and you know I it, it's obvious I, I just don't understand and after watching the video yesterday br briefly I, I do realize that I'm arguing with someone who believes we don't have a choice they believe we, we don't have a choice to choose Jesus Christ as our Savior. He chooses us, which, yes, is true, but Jesus Christ chose all mankind to be... Is God not your master? Are you Aiden, not meant to fear Aiden, God? Aiden, is my Aiden, and, Aiden, and that's a, another Aiden. thing I, I really... Um, wait, wait, hold on, Bruce. I, I really have to Aiden. learn to... Uh, wait, Bruce, please, I need to speak to Aiden. Aiden, you're corner. under contract for free will on my show. <laughs> really? You're going to hold me to that? I am, or I'll sue your ass. Uh, you are a litigious bastard. You really are. <laughs> All right. um, I, I'm so glad I never sign any contracts. I, he got me to sign it in blood, too. That's the worst part. I, know, so I can't even I say know. that it was forged. He can test the blood type and everything and the DNA. It's 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 quite irrefutable. But, yep. uh, yes, fine. I know. Chuck. That's, that's I will, what he does. I you will. Watch out. I'm the will best argue. at it, Aiden. I'm the best. <laughs> so, uh, Bruce, <laughs> hypothetically, if free will wasn't a thing. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> No. Um, yeah, I I think I think I did a thorough enough job of demonstrating the other side of that argument last night. If you want me to argue from the other side, Chuck, I can do that because as Socrates says, um, man cannot properly understand an argument without being able to articulate its defense. So exactly. that is perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. So. Yay and verily, brother. Free will is a thing. And I'm, I'm certainly glad that we live in a universe where free will is a thing. I can tell you that. But I don't think that we got free will because we were granted it by something. I just think that have to have free will is the default circumstance granted us by living in this universe. All right, Bruce, you have the floor now, brother. Yeah. Well, amen. And yes, it is great. We have free will. And, you know, unfortunately, it, it could be used to our disadvantage because naturally, being in the flesh, being a person, our will will always go against God. Um, we as humans will naturally lie, sin, covet, uh, blaspheme God's name. And thank, thank, I mean, give praise to God. I think uh, someone told me yesterday, they, they, they kind of mocked my testimony, said it was all about me, 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 me. But 
it, it is ultimately about Jesus. And Jesus allows us to choose to become one with him, be accepted in the beloved. And um, I was reading in Romans today. I, I, I decided to, this morning I'm just going to crack open Romans and take, kind of take it from the top. And it, it just blows me away when people say that only the predestined could believe, or they believe because they are elect and they're predestined to believe anyway. But, you know, as I down to verse 15, so as much as in me, I'm ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power unto salvation to everyone who believes. I, I, I just imagine Mark and Christian, well, yeah, they're actively believing to the Jew first and also to the Greek, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And, you know, I, I think in Jesus Christ. I do not trust in myself. I do not trust in I do not trust God predestined me to have faith. I choose to put my faith in the unknown God that not I have never seen physically with my eyes, but I put my faith in the spiritual presence of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. Oh, and it says very few that just live by it. Uh, can, can I? Oh, sorry. sorry. And, I... I when, when Bruce is finished, I, I want to make a quick insert. Oh, uh, Bruce, uh, I put in the private chat what uh, Brother Pike uh, said back to you. Are you there, Bruce? Me? Yeah, I, I, I see it. Um, okay. He is a very genuine guy. He, he does have the love of God in him, but it's unfortunate he believes that it's only for like people and for all. It's it's a shame. It Bruce. Really is. No, no, Bruce. It's not no, a shame. No, Christian is a no, great teacher. Ma yes. What do you yes. mean? Can I ask you a question, I, I, Bruce? Ma Mark, Mark, Mark. I was about to Evian was gonna ask get him in first. Yeah. So right, Bruce. I can Go ahead. The day before yesterday, when uh, Brother Pike had his teaching, and we talked about this um, free will and predestination and stuff, you said that you had come to faith Why he did gone. he poop away? Oh, there he is. Can, can you hear me, Bruce? I'm sorry about that. It, um, yeah, yeah, it, accidentally it happens. Logging out here. It happens. Uh, but, but could you hear me before that? We, we were I didn't. Talking... I... Okay. We were talking the day before yesterday uh, on... on um, uh, on Christians' Bible teaching about free will and, and predestination and so forth. And you said that you had an experience which led you to belief. Did you not? Uh, I don't know if it was really experience. I, I really came to conclusion that I needed to. You're you're breaking up, Ed. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. Robot. You're robotting you're very robot. badly. Yes. Uh oh. How about now? Could you get somewhere with? Yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. Please continue. I wouldn't Please. say that it was an experience. It was really a conclusion that I came to. I realized I needed to get right with God. And 
I remember sitting at mass during the, the first week of Advent and I kind of, you know, was ready. I'm like, I'm going to get back into church every week. I, I want to continue to grow closer to God and draw closer to him because I just can't take it anymore. Sin will eat you alive. It will hold you down. It will quench your spirit. It will separate you from an almighty God. And I was really just living the consequence of a sinful life and a sinful person. And it, it's so you were already a believer. I was, I did consider myself a believer in the head, but not in my heart. That, that's how I would describe it. I knew who Jesus it, was. It was. Yeah. I knew he went to the cross for our sins. I knew he uh, was buried and rose three days later. I knew all about it. You and, know. and you believed so you were a to have believer. actually been, you believed it to actually have happened, not just you knew it because you, you know that is what Christianity teaches. You knew it as something that actually happened in reality, right? Yes, or but wrong. I did not know what hold it Hold on, meant hold me. on. Bruce, I got to ask you this, buddy. You were born and raised basically Catholic, am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, we've had the same experience. So you're asking questions of Bruce that he really couldn't answer in his young age, but he was seeking out God. Am I right so far, Bruce? In a way, yes. Okay. So me and Bruce probably had the same experiences, kind of, sort of. So anyway, Bruce, I want to interrupt. So what, what, what I, I, I just what, wanted to establish that we we both were uh, born Catholics and raised that way. Go ahead. And yes. let me just say this: there can be, and there is, true faithful believers in Christ in the Catholic Church, but are they really thriving in their faith? I, I tend sure, to let's... disagree with that because what this is what really stumped me. I, yes, considered myself a Christian. I knew what Jesus did on the cross. But when I was asked, have, am I going to receive his eternal promise of heaven? I didn't know. So can you really have a reward or a promise or a gift? If you don't know about it, what? So I, what? What Bruce, I'm driving, another, another what I'm word. driving towards, what I'm driving towards, is the fact that for me, I never, even when I saw myself as a believer and taught others in the church about Christianity, taught uh, people who were going to be uh, confirmed <laughs> about Christianity, I did not myself believe that all of these things had really happened in reality. And I actually thought that no one else did either. My realization that others in the church actually believe that was part of me leaving the church. I have not thought of God as something actually existing since probably, well, I was five when I said I wanted God to send me back to earth, blah, blah, all of that that I told you about. Uh, and pretty soon after that, probably, uh, I had no belief, but I know of it. I didn't choose as a five, six, seven year old to not believe. It wasn't a conscious choice. So how could it be a conscious choice for me to believe? Well, first John chapter one, verse six says, 
if we I'm say I'm sorry, Bruce. We, one more one more interruption, I promise there'll be no more. But I do need to know this, brother. How old were you when you started questioning your Catholic beliefs? Roughly. I didn't question it. I was reaffirmed through scripture. Okay, well how, how old counseling. at what age? At what age, bro? I was twenty two years old. Okay, that's cool. I, I just was curious about your age. Now you can go on to answer a deviance question, if you so, remembered it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so what, think, of, think of it like this. How can you have a reward or a gift from re, a reward, like eternal life that God gives us through Jesus Christ? How can you have that if you don't know you do? And I've asked this question on here before. Do you know that you have eternal life? If yeah. someone cannot say that for sure that they do and point to the cross at Calvary that Jesus died and bled on and rose from, they, they likely don't know they have eternal life. And, but I don't. I don't know that. But I, you can. I don't know anyone. And, but now, but have, um, Deviant, what does it I have to do with my you, choice? I, I want to reference you to a verse when you said you taught the, the sacraments and taught Catholicism, but you didn't not believe Catholicism. Your... I did not teach Catholicism. I never said that. I was brought up in a Protestant, evangelical Lutheran church. Oh, that's why you said confirmation. Okay. Yes. yes, Lutherans do follow the confirmation pattern. Yes, yeah. Um, but First right. John, First John, chapter one, verse six: If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us cleanseth us from all sin so deviant if you're teaching the gospel and you don't truly believe in it you're, you're technically lying and the the truth is not in you and i'm not sure which, how which is which is why i stopped which is why i quit when i i had this realization i realized i cannot continue because I am lying. Amen. It's I. It's good. Um, you realize I'm, that. I'm no. I haven't. Yeah, of course. And I. I don't want to be a liar, and I don't want to be a hypocrite. Amen. I loved. I loved the the, the work. I. It was a lot of fun and. It was much more than just teaching about the Bible. It was being a support to to young people who many of them had had issues and sought solace in, in me and the others. Uh, but I realized I was lying. So I, I had to distance myself from it and I did. Well, I have two questions. The only I have thing... a question for Bruce and I have a question for Deviant and Aiden, the atheists mm -hmm. in the room. Bruce, what, what did you contribute to your own salvation? Can I answer Deviant's question really quick? Um, she she mentioned that um, she didn't want to lie anymore, but you're you're not lying to the students that you're teaching. You're you're lying to yourself, telling yourself that there is no God, and you I don't know where you were in life, but you're choosing to really draw you're roboting your, really bad your, like i can't understand a word you're saying and look her last statement was a statement not a question this has already been addressed you're literally just filibustering to avoid my question you're a gaslighter mark you gaslighted me all day all, all the time last night every point i go out you don't even know what that means dude i, I, don't I know do know what that means i i do okay okay so answer my question what did you contribute to your salvation I believed. 
you contributed sin to your salvation. That's the right answer. Now, Deviant and Aiden, my question to you guys is, what would it take for you to believe? An act of your own will or an act of God? Or any other no, answer you may or God. may not come up with? An act of my own will. Act of God. Exactly. Amen, brother. 50% an act of God. Thank it, you. it would yep. take an act, an of, act God of God. For, it All would right, take an intercession time, of the Holy God Spirit. God it's not it's time to bounce you, Aiden. Sorry, bye. Kidding. <laughs> no! You're not going to want it. You're not, you're no, not going to want it. Why don't you go God. pray? Why don't you go pray to God that he affects their will and brings them to him? I do. I pray that God intercedes with these people all the time. And I don't mean these people to be rude. These are my friends. I love them. <laughs> and I recognize that only an act of God is going to change their hearts. Not an act of my will, not an act of theirs. God's going to have to intervene. And what would that job. act of God be? Uh, making them believe. Yeah, I would say only God knows what. And I'm not saying that as a as a colloquial colloquial uh, word. I'm using it as if God exists, He is the only one, or they or she or whatever is the only one who knows what it would actually take for me to be thoroughly convinced if it is a god who created me and everything they are the only one who knows that and they are the only one who has the power to convince me god's word can't convince you and no, I have read the Bible. I taught the Bible. Why? I that doesn't... was one of those sharing God's word. I have read the Bible. I have taught the Bible to others to to prepare them for and their well, that, the most I, I, I want God in my here. life. Bruce did, Bruce, did Thomas the Apostle not bear witness to the events? It's one thing to read the scriptures. One at a time. But it's another to bear witness. But it's another thing to bear witness to the actual events of the scriptures themselves. And Thomas the Apostle witnessed the events of the scriptures, and yet he still doubted. Did I not? will not, did not debate did not... doctrine with an atheist. I, I refuse. Yeah, well, go ahead and use a cop-out. Use a cop-out all right, you want. I'm going to make the point. I'm still going to make the point. Right? Uh, you're on my team now. Give Bruce the floor and give him respect. Go on, Bruce. That was so disrespectful, you, you... though. Give him respect. He's the one saying yes. he won't debate doctrine with an atheist. Where are yeah, you? Seriously. Up. Judge a fool not by his folly, but according to his folly. Also, like, be like. <sighs> you don't. Just look it up, please. You debated playing a doctrine with me last night. What happened, Bruce? You don't address what happened the between right now and last night that changed one your mind. Speaker, go one speaker at a time. I said, Bruce has the floor. Go, Bruce. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have petitions that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin, a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life for them that sin unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whatsoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. I went a little farther than I wanted, but yeah, it's funny when Christian Pike does it because he does it on purpose. But what you just did there was literally just filling dead airspace. You didn't answer anybody's concerns. You didn't address anybody's questions. 
you just flip somewhere. That, the that right there is, is a great example of gaslighting. Your Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You're intentionally trying to, to Im finish my, my character, which is gaslighting. That's Your not question. what gaslighting is. Gaslighting That's is convincing not what gaslighting somebody is. that happened. Convincing somebody That's... that something happened that didn't actually happen. Which is what you're doing. No. Oh, I'm not, oh, not going to waste my time oh, arguing. Oh, gentlemen, we are not debating gaslighting. Okay. Bruce had his turn. Mark, you're up. I said what I had to say. Uh, th that was a pointless 30 seconds or however long it was because it had absolutely nothing to do with the topic at hand. We were talking no, about what I it would take to... for we... unbelievers no. to be convinced. Are you going to like, let me finish? Bruce, be quiet. Mark I gave you talking. your piece. I gave you your piece. Please give me mine. You literally just said you're not going to debate doctrine with atheists, and then you go and read some random passage that has nothing to do with the topic at hand. What are you even doing? Like, what? What is your like goal here? It makes no sense. Like I said, it's funny when Christian Pike reads random scripture because he does it on purpose. You even admittedly went way beyond the purview of our topic and discussion. For what? Okay, Mark is. He may know Aiden that you can have eternal life. Bruce, Bruce. You can... Aiden's up. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Aiden. So, Bruce has now taken the stance that he will not debate doctrine with atheists. And yet last night, he had no compunction whatsoever debating doctrine with me. As a matter of fact, he stayed after the show was over and continued debating doctrine with me well into the night. So I asked him what's changed, and I'm sure I'll get an answer from him, but I also have speculation as far as what's changed. And I think that Bruce has come to a realization that it's a rather damning thing to his knowledgeability of the Bible and to his knowledgeability of scripture when an atheist can run circles around him in terms of his understanding of those topics. That's what I think. That's my speculation. But that was not the original point I was trying to make. I'll actually make my original point. It was that there are people in the scripture who bear witness to the events that the scripture describes who doubted. They doubted whether that Jesus was the Lord. They watched Calvary happen before their very eyes. They watched it happen, and yet still Thomas doubted it. Until what? Until God made himself manifest before Thomas. Until God corrected the otherwise heinous path that Thomas would have set himself down if he continued in that doubtfulness. God interceded and sought to it that he might be changed. He did the same thing to Paul when he was on his way to Tarsus. God, the God of the Bible, has no problem whatsoever directly interceding in people's lives, whether it's knocking you off of your horse and blinding you for three days, like with Paul, or whether it's for asking you to put your hands through the hole that the Alliance of Longinus left and the fingers through the holes the nails had left with Christ and Thomas. There's many examples in the scripture where God deigns that there needs to be a direct intervention right here and right now. All right, and those are for people that saw those things in person. So when you're talking about people like us, 2,000 years removed from the fact, naturally, I am going to have the expectation that if this entity, if this God that knows everything will have the compunction to change my heart and my mind if he so will it to be the case. That's all I have to say. I yield the balance of my time. Okay, Bruce, you're Aiden, up. If you, you have, have a rebuttal, Bruce has the floor. No interruptions, please. Go ahead, Bruce. I'll, I'll keep it. Aiden, you have to make that decision. You have to make that decision to recognize your sin and denounce your sin and your will and surrender to Jesus Christ for dying for your sin. If God reveals, if you really want God to show you a sign, it's going to be too late. And you're going to die in your sin because you failed or chose not to believe on the, his only son. 
It, it's like I read you last night in John 8. You, you will die in your sins if you believe that Jesus is not the, the chosen one. You're going to die in your sins if you if, if you don't believe that Jesus died for your sins. And you know what? When, that, when God finally does reveal himself to you, you're not going to be on earth. And you're not running circles around me. You're not. You're, re, you're rebellious to the word of God. You choose not to believe. And you sit here and say, oh, I'm waiting for God to prove himself to me like he did with Thomas. You're, a, you're mocking God. Clear as day. Now you're I'm gaslighting mocking him. I'm mocking no, no, him. Bruce, I'm you are him. literally Mark gaslighting Mark right now. Mark, Mark, the yep. floor is Bruce's until I say different. Go on, Bruce. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Jesus does not, he wants us to believe. He wants us to come to him like little chicks going to the head. That's what he was saying in Matthew 23 to the, uh, the religious rulers of Israel. He wants them, he wants us all to come to him. And we have to make that decision through our own free will. It's not, we, we can't sit here and wait and wait for God to change our mind. We have to draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to us. We, I mean, it's funny, I, you know, you guys said something, the quote of the week, I'm going to be, I, I told my pastor this this morning, he, he almost laughed me out the door. You can't choose to believe salvation. You can't choose. I'm very proud of that quote. It's the most ridiculous, mind-boggling quote I've ever heard. How, how does the, and then you ask me, do I believe in World War II? Like, it doesn't matter if I choose not to believe in World War II, just like it doesn't really matter if you choose to deny Christ, because he's here. World War II happened. So whether you choose to not believe it, it still happened, and that gift is that still my there. Point. And that was isn't my it great, point. Isn't it great when the opponent makes the point for you, Mark? Isn't it a beautiful thing? Okay, you, stop, the, stop. The point was that stop, you just said was ridiculous. Stop, stop, you just made stop. Stop. Verbatim. I'm going to let Bruce, you can't hey, shoot. Bruce, Bruce, you have 30 seconds to finish. He was finished. The fact that these Bible teachers actually say that we can't choose is hogwash. It is not logical. You're hogwash. Thank you. It is not logical. We absolutely can You're choose. I chose to come on this platform today. I chose to follow Jesus. We sang that song today. I have decided to follow Jesus. And you know what we also say? Whosoever will. Whosoever chooses to follow Jesus and confess in him that he died for your sins and allow him and surrender your will to him, Jesus will come into your heart and give you the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be predestined to. You just have to hear and believe it, and it, it it's I I really was a little Bruce, remorse Bruce, chapter and Bruce, verse. 30, Come on, where does Bruce, the Bible say that? Shut up, Mark. Bruce, your thirty seconds is up. Mark the floor. That was my question. Where does the Bible say that? That Jesus will come into John your heart. John chapter six. Bruce, I got to do the same John, thing. It was a question. Mark, I want Mark the answer. Has the floor. Shut yeah, up. I, or I'll I, I asked. Okay. Go ahead and answer, Bruce. Could you quote me? No, no, asked? no. You have the floor, Mark. Go on. What the heck? I mean, I I wanted an answer out of Bruce because he made a ridiculous claim that the Bible says something that it clearly does not say, and I asked him for chapter and verse, and now he's gone. He'll um, be back, I hope, anyway. Well, may, may I say something? Sure. So, I would like to say something Bruce, as well afterwards. Bruce levied a le an accusation. Bruce is him. back. Bruce is back. Okay. So Bruce levied an accusation against me insofar as stating that I was mocking God by drawing a parallel with Thomas the Apostle. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. So Unfortunately. what I would say in response to that is when one Blame mocks... It. When one I'll mocks my camera off so you don't have to look at me. 
when they mock a concept, John, that means six. that they. Bruce, okay, thank you, Bruce. Bruce I really now I got to tell that. you to shut up. Aiden has the floor. Oh. Now shut up and let him speak like I like I let you speak. Go on, Aiden. So, Bruce made the accusation that I was mocking God when I drew a parallel with Thomas the Apostle, as well as, I mean, I, there's, there's plenty of others. There's Simon Peter and the fish. You know, there's, there's, there's numerous examples within the scriptures of God directly intervening within one's life. And I cited those to make the point that the God of the Bible has characteristics upon which he will go into one's life and change that life to make it one more malleable to to suit him to be of better service to god it's the case with paul it's the case with thomas it's the case with simon peter those are three examples and not once did i belittle any one of those examples because to mock something means to either make fun of it or belittle it at the expense of something else and not once I challenge you, to, I challenge you, Bruce, to find me one example where in the examples I cited, I doubt I belittled or made fun of Simon Peter, Thomas, or Paul. Please cite it. Okay, Bruce now, Bruce now has the floor. Everyone, please. And then me. Except for Bruce. Go ahead, Bruce. I um, accidentally logged out, and then I didn't hear the audio for a, um, a few seconds. I, I didn't really hear what you said. But um, the fact that you're here as an atheist, I mean, I correct me if I'm wrong, you're, you're not here to learn. You're here to ask questions and... Yes, you're wrong. I mean, Aiden, can I ask you what this verse means to you? Maybe Mark too. I'll, which, I'll I'll let you both ask that. But um, which verse? John chapter six, verse forty-seven. Oh, that's where I'm at too. Verse twenty-nine. No, um, verse forty-seven. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Okay. Can can I preface that with this? Because Jesus answered. What What does that verse him, mean? This to you? is the work of God. This is the work of God that you believe on him who he hath sent. It's God's work that you believe. That's what Jesus said in the same passage. He said, this is the work of God that ye believe on him who he hath sent. It's God's no, work. No, it's the work of us, work. though, Mark. It's the work of no, us, though, Mark. That, because it makes no, but what Mark, Jesus it makes said. me. Yeah, Mark, right. it makes me feel better about myself if I say that it was me that did it, though. So if I say that it was me that did it, if I put myself in God's shoes for the sake of this, then I'm going to feel really good about myself, and that's what the Bible always talks about. It talks about how we <laughs> should feel good about ourselves, and how we should extol ourselves and our own virtues and what we do, not what God does. It's what we were supposed to focus on ourselves. It's, no, wait, that's not what the scripture says, actually. Aiden, and, and yeah, I get you're an atheist and don't really have as much connection to this scripture and the words of Jesus that a Christian may. I get that. But when Jesus says, this is the work of God, the work of God, that you believe on him who he sent, and somebody tries to bastardize that into, this is the work of me, I believe, I did this, I went to confession. I've repented. I, me, 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 me. It pisses me off because it's taking the word of God and twisting it into something it never said. It's God's work from start to finish. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. We are willing participants. Yes, we have free will. You're beating up a straw man when you're arguing against or for free will because we have it. We have agency. We can make decisions. Our free will has confines, though. And I'm going to give you an example that I've used plenty of times. Boland's even stolen my example. If if you have a carnivore, let, let's say a lion, all right, and you set before it a plate with steak on it and a plate with salad on it, that lion has the choice. He has the free will choice to choose. He has the choices there in front of him. His nature is going to dictate to him that he is going to choose that steak. The same with people. 
when God gives us a heart to choose Christ, our nature dictates our will in that. When he doesn't, our will is not for the things of God. It's for the things of man and of this world. But it's God who changes the hearts of men, not men. It could not be more clear in the scripture. Okay, Mark, well stated. Bruce, the floor is yours. And next, Christian Pike will be up. Go on. I, uh, I wanted. Yeah, Deviant, I, Deviant was trying to say something. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Deviant, Go ahead. On that. Deviant was next before I was. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Deviant. How about them apples? So. The. Oh my goodness, what was I going to say? Uh, I have to collect my thoughts for a second. Um, free will, believe me. Yeah, so, uh, the, the, uh, the Bible verse and the conclusion, the, I'm sorry if this is a bit jumbled and I, I've been waiting for a while and my brain has gone through 800 different topics in that while. So I'm kind of scrunching it all together. Um, yes, Bruce's point was what we, and with we, I mean me and Aiden in this case, need to do is to uh believe that jesus is our lord and savior basically he used uh, other words but that's the that's the gist of it the issue is that yes we can read it in a book but must deny for some your own people will for for listen Quiet, for Bruce. some people that might be all they need how those people live a daily normal life i do not understand and know but some people will believe that and there are also people who I don't know, read Donald Duck and believe Donald Duck is real. The issue is some of us are very discerning when it comes to what we believe and what we do not believe. I, for instance, do not believe what I read in a book. I need more, much more, to believe something. Especially when it is something that is so uh, not outrageous, but we're talking about things that has never been seen before or since. And since God created me, according to the Bible, he and only he knows what it would take for me to believe these unbelievable things, regardless. And he has not done that. I cannot, if you say, what you need to do is believe this. Yeah, and then I meet a Muslim on the street who says, all you need to, to do to have eternal life is uh, to believe in Muhammad. Why? What's the difference? Who should I believe? The guy who says I, I should believe in Jesus or the guy who says I should believe in Muhammad? Only God knows. Have you heard about what this can't... Yahweh guy, though, Deviant? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, th this is serious. <laughs> Excuse me, Aiden. Th th that's very Shut serious. Up, I mean... <laughs> Do you really believe in Donald Duck? Of course I don't. Deviant, do you believe in Donald Duck? All right, Deviant. Why not? Do well, well, ask me the same well, question. Well, well, well. I dare you to ask me the same question. Deviant asked her question. Bruce, you're up. 
and I'm going to give you a little extra time since three people asked a question. Go on. And then Brother Pike. I believe in Donald Trump. Yes. Why don't you believe in Donald Duck? No, I do believe in him. I want to take a positive position. Deviant, why don't you believe in Donald Duck? I saw a duck over... I, I'm looking at ducks right now where I am. How could you say that's not Donald? The, the fact is, I mean... Well, he's not walking and talking, just as I've never come across a man who rose from the dead. I've never come across a man walking on water. I never come across a man turning water into wine. Hold on, Deviant. No, I, I just answered his question. The, I, I know. I'm sorry I, if I, I, no, yes, no, yes, I, I just I, wanted to say, Deviant, I rose from the dead this morning. Well, that's, I actually did as well because I slept like all 36 anyway, hours. All right. Not for the kidding. <laughs> Bruce, I didn't mean to take up your time. Go on. Yeah, um, Deviant, you got to really kind of come to a realization that God does exist. Jesus Christ did exist. And I mean, what year is it? it you, you know what year it is, right? You, you count the, the years of Sweden. <laughs> yes. What, why are we, why, what started 2024 years ago, approximately? That the f uh, the fact that Christianity has had such a big impact that a large amount of the Western world uses this arbitrary date where Jesus probably was not actually born, even if he were born, he it was probably not that year, has nothing to do with whether or not there is a God. And you actually answered my question by saying, I have to accept. You are openly denying God's existence. I and do not believe there is a God because I have no reason to believe so. And hold on, that's not true. She's not uh, denying. Hold, hold, She's well, not saying well, that God well, doesn't well, exist. Here I go with my exactly. Whoa, whoa. I, whoa. Um, if if Bruce wants Deviant to answer a question, he will ask her to. I'm sorry, Chuck. Bruce, I'm sorry. And I'll Bruce, myself. you have the floor. You're in charge. If you have a question to ask someone, say, please answer that question. Okay? You got me? Go on. Amen. Thank you. I, I could do that. Um, Deviant, you, it, it's very foolish to be in the world today and just only say that there is no God, there is no creator, and just flat out deny the, the obvious creation that we're living in. Um I, I bet you maybe believe in evolution. I mean, I I think it, it's a very you gotta come to you have to come to a conclusion, Deviant, that there is a God, He made you, and He loves you, and that He allowed all things to happen for the pleasure of His will, and He also gave you a Savior, which is Jesus Christ. And the fact that you're here saying there is no God, I don't believe in him, I don't, there's no proof, yada, yada, that's a very foolish thing to say. And the Bible has said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. And from the trace of time to humanity, we can just, it's very clear to me that, God created the trees, the water, the sea, the birds, all so uniformly, if that's the right word. But everything, all nature is such in unison. How can there not be a live, active creator? I, I mean, you, you say that there's no God, he doesn't exist, but yet you can't explain the works that God has done or come up with any alternative. And, you know, you have to deny yourself, and that includes denying 
your what you think is right and you need to turn to what you know is right um if you don't believe that god is the creator of the world you must think we came from nothing I, it's just nope. uh God, the nope. gaslighting is so strong for somebody oh, that yeah, tried claiming really that is. this person's hey, gaslighting hey, that really person. Is. I have to cut in. Man, how many times do I have to come in and say, shut up? Okay, Bruce, you had your song and dance. Brother Pike is up. Oh, cool. I'm in it. I'm part of it. Hey, you wore the same shirt. Yes. I, should, I should have the opportunity to say, he said, I you don't experience. know me. Stop <laughs> gaslighting me. You know nothing about what I know and why I know that or not. I know right. what you said, and it's wrong, and it's foolish. Well, I'll tell gaslighting. you what. I'll tell you what. You're all giving me gas. So it's time for brother. <laughs> why? <laughs> me too. I, I've, I've, I had, I've had myself <laughs> muted, but that's it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for brother Pike. Now, be respectful to Brother Pike, because if not, I'll mute y'all. Go ahead, brother. Uh, he Charles, was not respectful to me. I muted myself. To follow Jesus. Isn't that right, Bruce? I believe that. You know, I don't have a whole lot to add to this conversation, to oh, be honest. I'm, uh, I'm here for all the wrong reasons, you know. Um Sometimes I show up with notes and stuff like I did last night and I try to be professional. And then sometimes I show up like this to make funny faces on camera. But the only thing I could think to contribute here uh, is a quote that I have just uh, transcribed from the mouth of Bruce himself. And, and I think that he's so right. He said in his words, not moments ago, he allowed all things to happen for the pleasure of his will. And I just wanted to say yay and amen. I yield my time. Can I be up? Uh, who do you yield your time to, Brother Pike? To you, sir. Uh, I guess I'll give it to Brother Aiden. Go ahead, Aiden. Sweet, sweet. All right. Um... Make sure you don't call me brother. I'm sure Bruce will nitpick that later. <laughs> he meant that you were black, Aiden. Oh, okay. Well, that's good, because I'm definitely not that either. So, with that being said, um, Bruce, what points has Deviant brought up today, yesterday, or any of the times that you've interacted with her on the answers that she has to what you attribute to God's creation. When has she brought any of that up? What are you asking me? When has Deviant ever made claim to have answers or lack of answers to the things that you claim are the, f the hand of God? These things that you alluded to, I'm sure that it's blind watchmaker or painting without a painter or something to that bent that I've already heard umpteen amount of times and Deviant has heard as well. But anyways, these these aspects of the universe that you think are the penmanship of God that cannot be explained by the likes of Deviant, when has she ever brought up whether she could or could not explain that? I'm just wondering. Well, she's denying the creator that created it. No, but so when did she bring that up? I mean, that's, not, that's not an answer to the question. When did she bring that up? Why does it matter? That's not an answer to my question. When did she bring it up? Why does that matter? That's not answering my question, Bruce. I'm when not, did I don't know. she bring that up? On April 5th, 1949. That's what. No, the answer is that she didn't. The answer is that she didn't. Uh, that you can't find any evidence of her doing that. I know that because I've watched all the interactions that you guys have had. But right? she's never but, brought that. No, no. Let me finish. I've never. She's never brought that up, and she's never made claim to that. And yet, you, in spite of that, 
decided to take it upon yourself to act as though, well, you don't have any answers to those things. You know in your heart that this is true. You're going to come at people for gaslighting. You're going to come at Mark for gaslighting and totally get the definition of gaslighting wrong. No, to gaslight someone? To gaslight someone? No, that's character assassination, sir. That's a totally different thing. And no, I'm not character assassinating you. I'm literally bringing up things that you did. No, if I were to call you something like an ignoramus, then that would be a character assassination. That's not what I'm doing. What I'm saying is the events that you did over the course of the stream, sir. You came on and you made all of those statements about Deviant. That's gaslighting. Because you are trying to act as though you know more about Deviant's thought processes and her actions and her thoughts than she does. That's gaslighting is trying to recontextualize someone's thoughts or someone's beliefs or something that happened in the past for your own sake. That's gaslighting. You're trying to convince Deviant that she's somehow gotten something wrong or she All has right, no well, idea what she's talking about. That's gaslighting, Bruce. And every you hear me? I'm still here? You you roboted really badly, but mm. please, uh, yeah, we'll start from the beginning of your statement. I can't hear anything. We can hear you. We can okay. hear you. So, okay, I'm, I didn't hear you guys for a minute. So if God didn't create the world, then what did? Tell me. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean by what created the world? Do you need a specific event? Do you need a specific person? What would you qualify to even be an alternative? Aiden. You because in order in order to field in order to field in order to field an alternative, I need to know it would qualify to even consider to be an alternative because if i give you something and you don't even consider that to be an alternative then it's a waste of time well there is no alternative god is the creator of the universe well, then why do you even ask the question why do you even ask the question then well then why are you questioning me for saying that deviant does not believe that when she because she's never made a statement on that before and yet you still acted as though that was definitively the case and that's gaslighting bruce well, if they don't believe in God, why would someone believe God created the world? That's not the statement that was made. The contention that you made was that there was no answers uh, as an alternative. That was the contention that you made. Stop trying to shift the goalposts. What it's is not going to work. It's not going to work. Questions. What is the point of you asking me these questions? What are you trying to point out? The point of me asking these questions is to point out the fact that although you tried alleging gaslighting against Mark, you have no idea what it means by virtue of you stating that it was character assassination. You gave a definition for character assassination and attributed that to gaslighting and then proceeded to construct a fake reality of what Deviant thought and believed and how smart she was or was not, even though she has not made a statement upon any of those things before. You presumed those things because your pride dictated that you knew better than she did. I am very firm and I have my king james bible to validate this and not only that i have the world around me this is it is more than obvious that this is god's creation not only right, that we, right. when, when i see a starving emaciated child with flies burrowing into their god's eyes will. because they're god's specifically for that there because they're specifically like that. there because they <laughs> wanted that to happen because they're blind Oh, I'm sorry. Are you trying to refute an atheist on what God's will is? You're right, dude. You got me. You got me, dude. You really got me red-handed on that. An atheist doesn't believe that there's God's will. Stop Chris's. Oh. Go home. Come on, time. Come on at a time. One at a time. All right, Bruce. Go ahead. You got the floor for... And I promise you will not be interrupted or that I will boot people. You have the floor for three minutes. Go, Bruce. Sorry. Um, I, I don't know what to say to that. I, I, I mean, it, it starts with faith. You first have to acknowledge 
the existence of God, existence in, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say to that. It, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous that. I, I don't even know what you're asking me. I, I don't even know why you have to rebuke me and just throw me so far off subject. I, I'm just, I, I don't even know where we are now. Thank, thanks, Aiden. So I will say this, that if we are in this day of age and we are denying God's existence, God's creation, we are being ignorant of the truth that is in front of us. It is a F-A-C-T fact that God is the author of this universe in the world. And if you disagree, please tell me otherwise. And I believe that's what Aiden is sticking up for Deviant to, because Deviant never said that God didn't create the universe, but she said she doesn't believe in God. I mean, if you don't believe in God, how could you believe that God created the world? Otherwise, you're still believing in God. If you believe that God created the world, just like the Genesis record states, well, then that must mean God is real. That must mean he does exist. If we're living in the world he created, how can we say that he's, he doesn't create us or it does not exist? I, I think it's just pure foolishness, if you really think about it. I don't know what else to say. I mean... Okay, Bruce, your time was about up anyway. Uh, you can respond, Aiden, same standards as I gave Bruce. Go on. All right. So most of Bruce's argument there was just, oh, it's silly, it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous, it's silly, and it's silly because it's ridiculous, and it's ridiculous because it's silly. Um, no, I never once stated that Deviant thought that God created the world, even though she's an atheist. You're totally lost on a rabbit trail of your own creation when you say that. No, for the umpteenth time, Bruce, I was pointing out to you that you making such statements about, oh, well, you don't have an alternate explanation for these things. You don't know what else could have done such a thing. Well, if you think nothing else could have done such a thing, then what is even the point of saying that, first and foremost? But secondly, you making those statements demonstrates you to have more knowledge than Deviant does by making those statements. Because even though Deviant has never clarified on those things, even though she has never... This is why you refuse to answer my question, by the way. In my opinion, I'm going to say in my opinion, because if I just stated that as a direct fact, then that would be me gaslighting. But that's my opinion, is that you avoided my question insofar as when I asked you when Deviant stated that, because you knew that if you were honest and you said, well, she never stated that, she never made any statement about that, that that would undermine your position, Bruce. In my opinion, you knew that, and that's why you didn't want to answer. Because if you admitted that she had never made commentary on that, and yet you still decided to anyways, that is you admitting that you somehow know more about Deviant Outcast than Deviant Outcast knows about Deviant Outcast. And that is textbook gaslighting. That's why I rebuked you, quote unquote. You say that it's so blatantly obvious that God created the universe, and yet we do not see that. We do not see that in any way, shape, or form. You, you just saying, oh, it's so obvious. A Muslim or a Zoroastrian or a Manichaean or any other different religion would be able to make that exact claim. Oh, isn't it obvious that Kare Vishnu created the world? I mean, look at it. It's just so beautiful. There's just so much going on within it. And the reason why I made the statement about when I see an emaciated child uh, with sorry, flies. Aiden, sorry, Aiden, time's up. No, time's up. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, Mr. That's... Bruce, do you have a rebuttal there? Uh, another thing that made me kind of come to that conclusion that Deviant does not believe that God is the creator of the earth. Um, she also mentioned that she ran into a Muslim and is not sure of maybe Muhammad is the way to God. That shows me that she's vulnerable. She's not grounded in Christ, and that she's foolish, foolish enough to believe that a prophet 
that came several hundred years after Christ, when Christ said, it is finished, he's the author and it was written that no other doctrine be added unto this, um, this prophecy, that you could be convinced by a false prophet, when yet we have so much warning from Christ to be aware of false teachers and prophets, like the prophet Muhammad. So that, another thing that, that shows me, she's um, vulnerable. She's open-minded. I'm going to use this word gently, but it, it, she's foolish. If you believe that a prophet several hundred years after Jesus Christ has any relevancy to God other than being the Antichrist to God, because that's what Muhammad is, he does not acknowledge Jesus Christ as God in the flesh. Therefore, he is that Antichrist that is in the world that we have a warning from, from the Apostle Paul and Christ himself through God. So that's another thing that showed me briefly where she may be at in her faith. She's, um, she's walking in darkness and she's looking for the light. She's trying to get that light from you guys, but she's not receiving it because of your not your, because of your doctrine, because you're not bringing the common salvation that was delivered amongst the saints. You have, Mark and Christian, you have everyone so confused on this predestinal theory. They don't know whether they could have salvation or not. And I end it there. It, really, it, it breaks my, it burdens my heart to see someone searching for God, searching for truth, but not find it from people who know the Bible so well. But they're all so caught up on this theory. Oh, well, you must be, you could only be predestined to believe. No, you have to choose in your heart to believe. You have to denounce your own will your own lust, your flesh, your sins, you have to deny yourself. Praise, and... praise. I'm sorry your time's up. Uh, no, I see amen. Brother Pike out there, if he has a comment. Go on, brother. Ch if Ch you Ch have please, one. Christian. Please, Christian. Chuck, I want to chime in because this was very much directed to me. Okay, go on, Deviant. You have three minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, so, Bruce, I'm sure that in some weird, twisted way, you think that you are somehow doing me a service. What you're actually doing is talking down to someone you do not know one iota about. You know nothing, literally nothing about me and yet you're sitting here and slamming me with all these i am vulnerable and i just went and talked to a muslim i did not i did not go and talk to a muslim it was an example of things that can happen in any person's life and i tried to show you how foolish it would be to just believe someone right off the bat which you are okay with if it is a muslim but when it's a christian i'm just supposed to believe them what and i am not searching i know where i am i know perfectly well where i am what i am doing i do not need you to tell me who i am or what i believe or not believe because tell, let me tell you this, you know absolute shit about me. So please take me out of that your rotation now. That says it all right to say. Then what is it? Where it do you stand? Says much about Sorry, what it means wait, about what wait, you wait, listen. Whoa, I'm, I'm like in the world. Who would like to respond to this? Elaborate. Please, where do you stand, Deviant? If you are so confident, shut up. Wait. I'm trying to do this in order. Who would like to respond? Aiden, would you? I raised my hand first. Yep, I raised my hand first. All right, go ahead, Aiden. 
next. Christian was Thank next. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce, for respecting the decorum of the room, buddy. I really appreciate you doing that, Christian buddy. It's really, it's really quite appreciated. No, no, no. It's not like it's Chuck's show and he decides who speaks next or anything. No, you're right. It's actually Bruce's show. Bruce has decided that Christian speaks next. Sorry, I'll just... Bruce, I'll just per- I'll just what, with that comment from Aiden, I want to say, I've been fair. Aiden was up next, so shut up and let him speak. So, Bruce did not listen to Deviant when she was speaking. Once again, like I pointed out last night, Bruce listens for keywords. Either he heard Deviant mention a Muslim, and he mentioned someone interacting with a Muslim, and he placed her in that interaction because she was the one that was speaking. You know, that's, in my opinion exactly why Bruce is such a difficult person to speak with because he's never actually listening to you. He's thinking about what he's going to say next or he's moving his hand back and forth to try and mock you or he's shaking his head back and forth from side to side, lulling it like a toddler rather than actually listening no to what someone has to say. And he himself... Let me just do a Bruce real quick. No, my turn, buddy. Sorry. My turn. You'll have your chance. All right? You elucidated so beautifully earlier in the conversation when you said that Deviant was vulnerable, quote-unquote, because she had an open mind. Bruce, you really need to shut up because I shut up everyone in this room for you. Now you will shut up for them. Understand, bro? It's nonsense. Shut up. It's nonsense. Go ahead, Aiden. Bruce, if you're going to throw a temper tantrum, go do it somewhere else. Okay, go do it with Stump or Lupin or whatever. Go throw a temper tantrum to someone who cares, okay? Because nobody in this room cares about your little temper tantrum. Get to your... You were the one that perfectly elucidated when you said, oh, Deviant's vulnerable for being open-minded. She's vulnerable because she has an open mind. If you think that somebody is vulnerable or a fool for having an open mind, then you have a small mind, which I pity far more than a foolish one. Because a foolish mind is capable of expanding itself. A foolish mind is capable of learning new things. But you, sir, seem to have a small mind that is incapable of sopping up new information that is perfectly content with sitting in the box of what it already knows and extolling the virtues of that without having to actually listen to what anybody that they're listening to allegedly is saying. Go ahead, Bruce. You know, this is why I stopped coming onto this platform for a while. I know stuff. Okay, wait, wait, shut up, Bruce. All right, now Aiden has given the floor to Bruce, so I'm going to give Bruce. Now I've deleted it to three minutes. Go, Bruce, you have three minutes now. You know, there's nicer ways to say be quiet and shut up. <laughs> shut up, Bruce. Um, Aiden, well, well Bruce, Bruce, you have to understand. Minded. This is my Bruce. Shut up. This is my freaking show. <laughs> so you'll do what I want to do. Now you got three minutes. You got three minutes if you want them or not. Go. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction, wisdom, and justice, judgment, and equity, to give solidity to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain to wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretations, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy chains. Aiden, if, if you are open-minded, that means you can be convinced otherwise from the truth. Um, wisdom comes from God. And first, you have to fear God. The fear of the Lord is beginning a knowledge. That's the first knowledge that you should look to obtain. Fear God and draw nigh to him. Luckily, we serve a merciful, loving God. But what a fool. Aiden came to you, 
and said, hey, uh, the angel Naomi came down from heaven and came off at Joseph, all the that were buried, and these are the gospels. You're rebutting. You're my man. You are rebutting, rebutting, and reverting, and uh, whatever. Man. I'm sorry. What about now? Is that bad? No, you're you're much better now. You're much better you're now. Good. Hello. Go on. I gave I gave you back 15 seconds. Go on. If I came to you and told you that an angel appeared to me and gave me these golden plates that were the word of God, and you believe me, is that not foolishness? Is that not open-minded? Because that's what the Latter Day Saints do. They go around finding anyone that is vulnerable enough to not have a firm understanding of the gospel and follow their false gospel. Open-mindedness is foolishness. You must seek wisdom and righteous counsel. Uh, a wise man attained a wise counsels. I don't know who you, you attain that is a wise or a teacher or instructor, but, I mean, in, in my from what Scripture defines, you're both fools. You deny God. You say there is no God, and you all you are all living in sin, which backs up Psalm 14 says they have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. You, you have to eventually come to the realization of that, guys. You are you are separating yourself from an almighty God, and until you come to that conclusion, you're living in sin. You're going to die. Okay. Here. Well said, Bruce. Well said. I'm sure your time's up. Who would like to next be up? Aiden or? Uh, yes, please. Sure pants, Tanner. No, I, 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 Christian, if you got, if you got something. If you got Mark something, left, Christian, you go ahead. Up there. Mark left a while ago, but I mean, I guess he would have had to have paid attention to notice that. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> as far as. As far as the um, the argument that you just made, though, Bruce. Um, All right, so oh, and, shut up, Aiden. So Aiden shut decided up. shut up. So Aiden decided to take the floor. So you have thirty five seconds. Go. Okay. So a close minded man could not accept Jesus into his heart. A close minded man is not somebody who would be capable of accepting God or his wisdom into his heart. If somebody is truly close minded, then they are somebody that is incapable of receiving new knowledge and new wisdom. So, anybody, any of the apostles that would have uh, otherwise not followed Christ, if they had what Bruce is talking about, if they had this closed mind, then they would have never opened their ideas to their minds to the idea that Jesus could be the Christ that he could be the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. But they came to that conclusion because he did fulfill biblical prophecy, because he fulfilled what was outlined by people like Isaiah earlier in the scriptures. He said things that would only be identifiable to those people and did things that would only be identifiable to this thing. That is why they came to that conclusion. They had the open-mindedness to link those things together and to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. So what you're asking, Bruce, is not to just be closed-minded. To just be closed-minded would be a fair and equal standard. No, you're asking that someone's mind be open only long enough to accept your doctrine, and then the second after they've accepted your doctrine, that it be slammed shut, and that it be totally watertight against any further ideas seeping in. And I consider that a foolish idea. I consider that if someone is truly strong in their faith and they're truly strong in their conviction, that they can be subjected to any myriad of other ideas. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm sorry, Brother Aiden. It's time to shut your mouth. Go ahead, yep, all right. Bruce. Your turn. That was pretty well said, Aiden, but why don't you believe? You have the knowledge of God, you seem to know his word. Why is it that you don't believe? And I'll give the floor back to you. I don't believe because I have not been, I have not had the Holy Spirit revealed to me as though it has been revealed to other people throughout the, throughout the scripture, through as though it was revealed to Simon Peter on the lake of, on the shore of Galilee. You know, I did not have that revelation provided to myself. That's not what's, and I'm not asking for a direct equivalent of that, but Deviant herself 
very eloquently stated it earlier. If the God of the Bible is real, if the God of the Bible is a true entity that exists, then he knows my heart. He knows what it will take for me to believe. He knows what it will take to push me to that. And he knows for a fact that if I am pushed to that belief, that I would do everything within my power to evangelize and spread his word because I need only a genuine belief in those things in order to pursue that funny. lifestyle. But, but well, it it's day. time for Father Charles to be a little biased here, Aiden. Good. It's up to you to say yes or no. But anyway, go on, uh, Brother Bruce. Well, I've tried. I've already tried saying that earlier. I've already tried opening up my heart to that. I've already tried opening up my mind to that. And I've already tried giving myself over to that. And I did not receive anything in return. I did not receive anything whatsoever right. in return for that. So I'm going to ask you a question I asked you last night. And I'm going to be genuine about this question. But when you asked Jesus to come into your heart, did you go to a church? Did you attend church? The last time that I asked that, yes, I did. For how long? Uh, that would have been for at least like a month. I think it was I'm, the only reason why I stopped to hesitate there for a second was because I was thinking it might have been a bit more than a month. But just to be conservative, I'll say a month. Did you read the Bible every day? Yes, as a matter of fact, um, I've, I've read the Bible cover to cover. Now, I haven't read it cover to cover in quite some time. I've mainly only read portions of it since that, but I have read the Bible cover to cover. And this church that you attended, what kind of Bible did they use? They use KJV. Was it a... Pentecostal church, Baptist church, um, non-denominational. Orthodox. An Orthodox. Okay. Have you tried any other churches other than that? Hold on, Bruce. Hold on, Bruce. At this point, I really have to say to Aiden's answer, so cool. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there's, there's, a, there's an Orthodox church that's on the river of the city that I live on that is on a, it's like right across from the spot that I usually read whenever I, um, I go on my river scoot adventures that I've told you about many a time. But it's right across the river, and I figured at one point, I was like, what the hell? I might as well give it a try. And I did. I did gave it a good try for a while. Did you go to any other churches other than that particular one? What's that? Did you go to any other churches? No, sorry. My fiance that? is asking me something, Bruce. I'm sorry. Um, yes, babe. This is what I wanted to do um, with my day off. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing this. I did hear what you had to say, Bruce. Oh, no. She was asking, is this what I really want to do with my day off? And I said, if this isn't what I wanted to do with my day off, it's not what I'd be doing or something to that extent. Anyways. Um, well, no, I understand. No, I I understand. Did you tell her you're on Father Charles's stream? So I, I'm on the Father Charles's stream. So, so she, I can't think of a way to she instantly it. understood. Oh, she did. No, she okay. nodded her head. Okay. So, All right. She nodded her head. So, <laughs> I, but my question. No, I did uh, not, Aiden. Bruce. To answer your question, no, I did not go to a a, a different uh, church. I did not. Another question I want to ask you. Um, and you know, I'm not poking at you. I'm just trying to get a little idea of no, who you are. Fine. Do you have any friends that you associate personally or like in person with that are also Christian? Yes. Um, I, the majority of my friends in person as well as online are Christians. Do they go to the Orthodox church or a non-denominational church or... Um, I kind of have, I actually don't have any personal friends that are Orthodox. Um, I, I have mainly, I have a couple of Lutheran friends. Um, I've got one or two non-denominational friends. Um, I do have, I have one Baptist friend. Um, but I kind of have a bit of a rainbow cast in terms of Christian denominations that I have as my friends. Now, this is a little personal. Is your fiance a Christian? 
Uh, no, no, she she's not. Uh, she was raised okay. actually like yourself in a very Catholic family. But she doesn't acknowledge God or doesn't believe in God. She's would you say she's a non-believer? No, she. I would say that she is a non-believer. Yes, and if she is a believer because I'm not 100% sure on that, but if she is, then she keeps it very much to herself. Not that I would discourage her if she were to be a believer. I don't have any problem with that whatsoever, but if she is, then she keeps it private and to herself. All right, so Aiden, um, I'm going to kind of break down a little bit what you just said to me, okay? And I asked you, have you ever decided to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? You said yes. You started going to church for a month, and then you stopped. You also told me you have a few other friends that are part of kind of a lukewarm church, Lutherans. Lutherans do not evangelize. Uh, uh, just there. Not, from what I'm, I gather from that, you're not really affiliated with any strong Christian individuals that share a likewise faith. And from what I've gathered, from what you've kind of described to me, you went to church for a month, gave it a try, didn't get anything out of it. And now here you are saying God doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And God never revealed himself to me. No, I never said that. I never said he doesn't exist. That's not true. I well, never, I've never him. once precluded. I've never once precluded him from existing. So please take that out of your mouth and don't say that again, because I would not say such a foolish statement. Well, I well, think to definitively, I it, think to definitively say that God exists is just as foolish a statement as to definitively say that God does not exist. Because if you absolutely knew that God existed, then you would not need faith. Faith would be totally thrown out as a requirement for your beliefs. If you knew with absolute certainty that the God of the Bible was real, then faith would not be a factor within your life. Well, I have faith that the God of the Bible is real. And through faith, he reveals himself to me through his word, through his works, through his spirit, and through everything around me. All things are made of God. Um, another thing I want to add, you know, how, how do we know that the spirits are of God? Um, but from what I, I gathered from there, Aiden, it. It's not in your heart, dude. You, you got to really have that change of heart, and you got to ask God to change your Bruce, do you have the Book of Life? The Bible do you is have the Book, book of life. life on you? No, it's not. No, the Book of Life is what is read at judgment and what will determine who is and is not saved. The Book of Life is not the Bible. Are you saved? I do not know. I do not You're know not if I will. I know I know right now, according to the Bible, according to the Bible as of this moment in time, no, I am not saved, but God does not look at me as though I am right now. He looks at me in the totality of my soul. So what if, what if God looks upon me and he looks upon me in all of my potential? What if I die tomorrow? Well then he knows whether or not I will die tomorrow, and he knows whether or not I will die in sin. If you die tomorrow, you, you're, you're going to face a cruel, cruel judgment because you are not saved. Through Maybe, I Maybe I will. Maybe I will. You won't. You don't Maybe know. I will. You won't. No, I don't. You do not know, and you won't. You, you, you will not inherit glory because you have not accepted God's gift through the beloved Jesus. You're denying it. But do you're you know that that will always God. be the case? You're you're denying Jesus. You're denying that he went to the do cross. Do you see me? Do you see me as God sees me, or do you see me as though a man sees me? I, I'm seeing you from what you've told me. You've told me that you prefer. No, but I'm asking you: Do you see me as God sees me, or do you see me as a man sees me? I do not see you as God sees you, but I see you as a sinner who is denying what God has given us to save us from our sin. Yes, I deny that because I would be dishonest in stating otherwise. If if I if I told you right now that I had some sort of revelation provided to me and I did not, then that would be nothing but foolishness and that would be lies. I'm not going to lie to you, Bruce. Well, I've not had that experience and I'm not going to act as though I did. Explain the gospel. It, what is the gospel? What is the gospel? 
Yeah. So when you're when you're when you say the gospel, do you mean the Bible as a whole, or do you mean Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the gospels. But what what is that good right. news? But that you said the gospel. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! The gospel is the good news. Amen. Okay, so the entirety of the Bible, then. I'm just, I'm asking for clarification. I think that's worthwhile to ask for clarification on that because there's two different answers there. The Bible as a whole says something that the Gospels individually do. The Bible as a whole is the, the totality so of the story, whereas that's only a part of it. What's that, sorry? So you do not believe the Gospel. Am I right? Is that accurate? I do not believe that the gospel describes a supernatural entity. No. But is there a supernatural entity? I do not believe so. I have not seen it demonstrated to be the case that there is any supernatural phenomena within our universe. Have you ever taken any medication? Like from a pharmacy or a doctor, um, like an antibiotic. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How do you know that's really a medication or an antibiotic? Well, I don't know for certain, do I? You have to have. No, I don't have to have faith. I actually don't have to have faith. I actually rely on the pharmaceutical you just trust industry the doctor? standards for. I, I actually rely on the pharmaceutical industry's standards for accurate labeling and accurate distribution so of their products, which is something that is reviewed not just on one institution, but is actually watchdogged by numerous other institutions, all of which will face significant trouble if one of them fails in the system of delivering me that medication accurately. So I have faith, sure, in a colloquial sense of the word, but I don't but, have this. I don't think that there's a spiritual power that transfigures my medication into an antibiotic. So when you get your antibiotic or medication, you don't take your own test kit to verify that it's the proper medication you need. You go by the faith of the pharmaceutical companies. Well, it's not faith you had because faith is belief. Faith is belief in things unseen. And if I wanted to, I absolutely could test that medication. If I wanted to, if I had the purview to test that, I could. I'd have the capability of doing that. I don't have. There's no God test kit, right? There's no. There's no test kit that if it turns if there's two lines, God. If there's one line, no God. So I don't see how these are equivalent. Have you ever driven over a bridge? Yes. How do you know that bridge isn't going to fall? I don't. So you have faith that, I mean, you, you probably don't walk. Once walk again. And build, right? Mm -hmm. You can there, document everything, and make sure they welded everything correctly. You have faith Just because it's that unlikely. when you drive over a bridge... Dude, what happened in Baltimore, man? Just it, like, it just, like just like People in the prior right. scenario, just just like in the prior scenario that you mentioned, is it unlikely for me to have sat there and watched the entire construction of the bridge and for me to have watched every single weld be put in place and to make sure that every bolt was properly secure? It's unlikely, but it's not impossible. It's not. I could do that if I really wanted to. If I wanted to take the time out of my day to go and make sure that that bridge was properly constructed, and I wanted to look into engineering sufficient enough that I could verify myself that that bridge is going to hold up, I could do that. That is perfectly within the realm of possibility. There's no engineering kit that I can look at the creation of the entire universe and go, oh, yeah, yeah, obviously right there, that bolt wasn't properly fastened right there. Therefore, it is or is not in God's creation. There's no equivalent to that. So I don't know why you're bringing this up because there's no equivalent. There's no God test kit. There's no God engineering. Like there's none of that. There's no equivalent. So does God have to give that to you for you to believe in him? A test kit? No, I'm saying that the analogies that you are providing to me are faulty insofar as that they do not actually analogize. They do not have an equivalent to your part of the argument. My point That's is... That's what I'm saying. We have to have faith. We have faith 
that God is the author, the finisher, the creator, and our savior. We have faith through Jesus Christ that his word is true. His word is inspired by his spirit and that he is the creator. We have faith in that, just like we have faith when we take a medication or um, a, a vitamin or when we drive over the bridge. So I, I'd encourage you to really dive into your faith and really ask yourself, why am I really denying God's credibility? I mean, you went to well, church for a month. I mean, I, I've been to, I didn't just come from the Catholic church to the Baptist church. I visited almost every type of church there is, except an Orthodox, except an Orthodox church. I've never been to one. Um, they're really beautiful. There's a very they're, beautiful. They're really quite beautiful. Oh, uh, th there's one by my house. It's yeah. Miraculous building. It's, uh, the, the priest is actually the one that paints um, a lot of the sculptures there. But um, you have to keep searching your faith. You can't just, hey, I'm going to try this, go to church for a month, and then stop. And then just take the stand as, um, I don't believe, it's not real, God has to reveal it to me. You're well, not... I'm not stagnant. I, I still look into the scripture all the time, Bruce. I still look into it. I attend Bible studies, not just here, not just in this community. I do other studies as well with other groups if you go to like I, I i look at not right now no i don't because i have a very busy life right now bruce and the well, me too what you, what you, what you really don't no so, but bruce i'm just saying to you i'm saying to you that the actual practical logistics of me doing that i tried it gave it a try did not see anything come of it maybe i didn't meet all of your qualification criteria but bruce if I went down that list with you, right? I went down that list with you. I, I have all the friends of all the denomination that you think are acceptable. I go to church every single week. You know, I do everything that you would expect me to do. And I'm still and I'm still an atheist. You would just have another reason. You would just have another explanation for why that's the case. So it's not that. It's just a never-ending matrioska doll of different excuses for why I can meet the qualifications of what the Bible says one has to do in order to receive those spiritual gifts and yet still have come up empty. See, you got to replace what I would want you to do to what God would want you to do. Now, I am not God, but it is God's will of course I, that's not who i'm talking to right now bruce i'm not talking to god i'm talking to you but i i don't i mean you're not gonna lie i'd love for you to go to church and validate your faith but god wants it more believe me right god, but the point that i'm making to you, but bruce bruce the point that i'm making to you though is is that even if i did all of those things right i, I go to church every week and i've got all baptist friends and I, I still read the Bible every single day, and I read it as often as I can. And the second that I get off this stream, I'm going to go read it right now, and I still do not profess to believe. Then there's just going to be another excuse lined up right after all of those as to why I still don't believe. It has to be that I'm getting something wrong. It couldn't be that the book is wrong. It has to be me that's wrong. You are. And you, you have to come to a conclusion of that, that you are wrong and that your debt trespasses in sin and the that fact you deserve that you have help. Faith, the fact that you have faith tells me that there's an inkling within yourself that also acknowledges that the Bible could be wrong. There's also a part of yourself that doubts. There's also a part of yourself that wonders whether what you're doing every single day is actually legitimate or whether you're yeah, just wasting but your time. the Holy Obviously, Spirit reconfirms me. Um. Believe me, dude, my, my own father is an atheist. My own father, the man I look to my whole life, says that Jesus Christ is a made-up figure from the Roman Empire, made to control the Jews. My own father tells me that. But when I look around my life, I see young kids um, growing in Jesus and uh, learning about Jesus. I see what God has done in my life since I've decided to follow Jesus. When I read God's word, I get re-confirmation that this is true and I am doing right by following God and following man is contrary to following God. What you're doing is following man. 
you're not continuing to validate the faith. I'm following the evidence. That's what I'm following. I'm following the evidence. So what if you, you had a task, let's say you're a construction worker and you're building this giant skyscraper and you give up after a month. You say, boss, it's just too hard. I can't get all the steel up. I don't know how to weld this together. I don't know where this piece goes. You give up after a month. Right. I mean, you got to keep searching, brother. You can't just go to one church. Say, hey, I ain't but, getting up this. You need to keep but searching. Bruce, but Bruce, the analogy that you just gave of trying to build a building for a month, according to the manual, according to the Bible, if we're going to use that analogy, according to this manual in front of me, if only I do all of the effort of trying to build that building and show that my effort in building that building is the, legitimate, the effort, that I am going to be granted, that I'm going that, to be granted. No, hold on. Listen, I'm not done. That I that if I put in the time and the effort and the sincerity above everything else, the time and the effort is not really the main crux of this. I'm sure you know this. Those are not the main axioms of whether this happens. It's the sincerity that is most important for this. So if that if the criteria of sincerity and of the less important aspects of time and effort are met, I am supposed to, according to this manual, receive something. For the sake of this analogy, let's say that it's a whole bunch of girders that I it's receive in exchange for my work. But the girders never show up. The guy that's supposed to deliver the girders never shows, never calls me, he never makes it apparent that he's going to deliver those girders. You never why, go would I keep, why would I keep building the building if I was guaranteed those girders and they never show up? Then, it, then it's just demonstrated to me at that point that building that building is a waste of time. You need the proper equipment. You need the proper counsel. You need the proper experience. And that's what you're not validating. You're not going to a Baptist church that reads the King James Bible. You're not going to a Catholic church or any other church. You're just, you're not giving it much effort to validate the faith. You're giving up. That's why it's going to a church. No, you need that. You need you that give to up. be the case. You you need that to be the case in order for your book no. to be true, but that doesn't mean that it's no. the case. No. The Holy Spirit is present when God's word is preached because the Bible is God's word. When a preacher opens God's word and preaches his word from the Bible, the Holy Spirit is present. If you're not putting yourself in a place where the Holy Spirit is present, you're quenching the Spirit Therefore, you're not going to get the spiritual validation that you're looking for. You're not putting yeah, but yourself I've already looked around. For it. I've already looked for it. No, I already did that. And all right, stopped. I already went to an Orthodox. Yeah, I did. I did stop you... because I saw no fruit from it. And the Bible itself says to know the validity of something by its fruit. And if I'm trying to produce fruit and nothing comes of it, then according to the Bible, then I ought to dust off my shoes and move on to the next city. So. Did you do that? What's the yes, next thing? I am continuing to pursue. I am continuing to pursue the truth. By Whatever not going that may to be, I don't know what it is. Yes. I'm you're you say you're continuing to pursue truth, but you don't go to church yeah. on a Sunday. Which church should I go to? According to you, I should go exclusively to a Baptist church. So once again, Bruce. No, 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 you can get faith in a, a church. You can you don't you can be saved not in a Baptist church. You most likely will be saved in a Baptist church because they preach the gospel. I would highly re recommend you visit and maybe seek some counsel from a, a Baptist that reads the King James Bible. That's what I as a felt as a believer in Christ. That's what I encourage you to do. I can't command you to do it because otherwise you're just doing it because some guy commanded you. I would encourage you to seek counsel and study from a Baptist minister if you can. Go to King, kjvonly.com, find a local Baptist church in your area, give it more effort, validate the faith that you're seeking to um, give credibility to. You can't just stop. I I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna keep pursuing truth the way that I want to pursue it. 
but that's I ignorant. The that's ignorance because yeah. truth is not what no, you're perceiving. Because, because truth, no, 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 no. Truth is only genuinely arrived at at one seeking no. of it, though. No, truth is only arrived upon one seeking of it. You don't just stumble upon the truth. Even if you do stumble upon the truth and it's staring you right in the face, you will not acknowledge that truth unless you are seeking after that. Aiden, is and I'm seeking you right after that. Truth you're trying in my to own way. find no, credibility. No, 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 Bruce, you are simply trying to state that I haven't met this criteria. I haven't met that criteria. The Bible doesn't say anything about the Bible doesn't say anything about well, you know, after x amount of time then this thing is going to happen right no it says that if you open your heart and you open your mind to the holy spirit that they will make themselves known to you that the holy spirit will work in your heart and will reveal itself to you i did that that is the bottom line That's just Christian because fault. you don't think i did no. it well enough just because you don't think i did it well enough no you're you're doesn't mean falling it didn't victim happen. You're, you're falling victim to false teachers. If you're really taking the things that Mark and Christian are saying, that God will truly reveal himself to you when it's appropriate, you're wrong. When you're in God's word, that's God revealing himself to you. When you're in a church that reads God's word and preaches from the Bible, that's the truth. What about but heresies? you're not validating what about that because like, you don't go to church. I, like, how, so how what about heretical teachings then? That how, you're do you think validating... That Hey, I'm going to go find God my own way, but I'm not going to gather with his other believers. I am gathering with his other believers. I'm gathering with No, you're not. You're not going to. His, I'm gathered with three of his believers right now. Oh, oh. Time to say goodbye to family. M-O-C. See you real soon. K-E-Y. Why? Because I love you. <laughs> M-O-U-S-C <laughs> See you guys Hi! Hey, I'm Bob and Mike I'm here to tell you about this new book I made About leaving Sesame Street Where <laughs> Herbert <laughs> led the Muppets out of Sesame Street <laughs> 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 All right, it's it's been great, guys. Gotta go. Check. Love you Check. guys. This has really been quite something. Thank you so much for doing this, buddy. I really do appreciate it. Bruce, right. you get wrecked, son. No, I'm just kidding. You have a good rest of your night, and you take care, man. All right. I'm praying for you. I, 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 I go visit Baptist Church. <laughs>